peace. Peace, peace. Let's see. When in doubt, go with 120. Like a bike it's just like, it's like Wing Chun, straight to the point, no bullshit, cut all the fluff out, go straight with 120, son, you're going to come out the top, that's my word, it's gone. The next scenario, was, what if you still say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to take 120 or face value. All right, we got the remedy for that one, too. Then that means what you're doing is you're going to show and prove to yourself, you're pulling yourself back from the uh, 1555 programming. Because if you're still saying to yourself, hey, I still got to, uh, you know, I still don't know if 120 is totally right and exact. Um, I need to show and prove it. Because other than that, most everybody else is trying to show and prove it to somebody else that it's right and exact and what they said. And they, and they ask uh, the older guards, what can I use to show and prove this? Or what can I use to show and prove that? Because they already bad witness to 120. They knew 120 was right and exact. They just don't know how to show and prove it to other people. To the recruiting process. Father said, I don't recruit. No. So, the recruiting process. Um, the the add-on to the cipher. If, you ain't, if you're not passing it forward, what good are you? You know, so at least you can do is pass it forward. Um, so I don't know how to teach that, but you pass it forward. You say, oh, it's the guards, you know, get with the old guards, go to law school. Yeah, same thing I do. I tell you, go to school, find an enlightener close to you. I help you along the way. I'm going to help you anyway, no matter what. I'll help you if you need help. Hold you down. Once you get your enlightener, now you're walking and talking with your enlightener. you good. I'm, I'm not going to put you in the hands of somebody who's not true and living. See, don't mistake true and living for what success rate they're at as versus what the European consider successful or not successful. Don't base it on that. I'm talking about the science. Just like there's people that enlighten me in 120. Their economics is not that great. Uh, it's, they holding it down, but it's not that great, and uh, there's nothing to write about in the newspaper or nothing. So, but there are other people who I know uh, got 120 lessons. Their economics is great. So, they said from the highest to the lowest. So, but whatever is the the way they're teaching or the information that they have to bestow upon people. Um, you could get referred to them. The ancients didn't even think about money. They were so into the science. People thought they was crazy sometimes when they was, when they weren't attached to a unit or a temple or something. So, that, that's been happening. All right, so, like I said, so now if you're trying to prove it to yourself, you're saying... Yeah, I bet when this is 120, but I still need to show and prove this. All right. Then that's when you quote your lessons, you get your plus degrees, because the answers are there. You got your plus degrees, take your plus degrees, and then you uh, go from there. Because once you got information in written form, pictures, what have you, video, whatever. Now, the next thing is to go to the excavation sites. So say you broke, you can't really go to the excavation sites. You don't really have to because the devil and his infinite wisdom help you along the way. So what you do is go to the museums. Go to the law library. That's key places. Museums and law libraries. Key places. Regular libraries are good when you was doing your first your first hit. Now when you go to the next level when you're doing excavation sites or you want to do excavation sites, the next best thing to actually go into the site, which sometimes this is better than the site because the site, they took everything out of it. So all you're doing is really going to see the physical place where it was, but the actual artifacts, they took them. You know, so... That's why I say go to the museums. There's different museums all over the world. You could do that. London got some real deep museums. 
they did a lot of um, pillaging. Um, America got good museums because they had money. They could buy a lot of shit. If you could get to the underground, you could really see some good shit that's not, you know, they don't, that stuff they got that's on the black market and on underground and all that. So it's a lot of night artifacts. So they're very expensive for this time and era because they're all original people stuff. With that, no, no, no. Quoting the first degree of one to ten is one part. Because to quote it, you had to do the knowledge to it. When you get into the understanding, understanding comes through growth and development. Researching helps you with growth and development. The part of the research you want to excel in is knowledge of self. What should I study after I study knowledge of self? He said, study some more about yourself. As above, so below. As below, so above. So no one understand who, who you are. All that was stripped from you. That'll get you back in balance. One of the first sources, um, the original man in North America reached for was the Bible. Because that's what was available to him. He saw it when he started looking in Deuteronomy. This is like around the time um, Harriet Tubman and all of them were making movements, right? So in those days, the real big revolution thing in that day was for knowledge itself was learn how to read. Mostly they was trying to get their mathematics and their alphabets, right? They was trying to learn the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Because with those numbers, you could do everything. And then they would try to learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. That's what we were doing. That was knowledge of self then. Get knowledge of self. They may not even use that term. It's not so much the words with original people when we use the words. Because we could use a word... And the way we use it in a sentence, it can mean a lot of different things. And just how we as people talk. We're a different culture now than all the other Asiatics on the planet Earth. We're different. Because we went through what we went through. We did the timeline. So you know what we went through. So that's why we know it's not your fault uh, as a people. It's not. The original people in the wilderness of North America, even if you're only third or fourth generation, you could be two generations and you mix right in with this. This, this, uh, this, this culture here, it will get you, just like if you were a, an Asiatic child and you grew up in a European culture neighborhood, and if that particular European culture neighborhood that you was in didn't show any racism or anything, you would you would assimilate right in. Because your dominant culture is where the dominant people, the dominant most of numbers are at. And if you're there, you would be you would be physically Asiatic, but your concepts and everything will be on that side. Unless your parents are teaching you different. And Asiatic children's parents, we don't really indoctrinate our children as their children into anything. We just kind of let them live. You might bring them to church or wherever your little spiritual place is. You know, even if it's in the room, in your house or whatever, however they're doing. But outside of that, they're not really influenced. They're going to do the regular go to school. And with Europeans, they're not doing that. They're doing, they, they, they got organizations set up. They're teaching them how to go out and survive in the woods by themselves. All that. You see what I'm saying? The difference. I'm just showing you the difference. Not saying one way is better than the other. I'm just saying they'll do stuff like that. Why? Why would they do that? Well, the economics enables them to do that. When we were in Kemet and we created the bread basket, the bread basket enabled the people who were scholars and writers and studiers and scientists and doctors to delve more into their profession because they didn't have to, readily food was nearby. They didn't have to spend hours uh, 
getting food. It was there. So you get your wages for doing, working for Kemet. They pay you in gold or silver. Then you can trade with the people who sold food. Readily available. Now you can get back to your books. See, that changes things when that kind of... So government is good when it, when it functions right. When it doesn't function right, it could be oppressive. So, for the original people in the wilderness of North America, we've been living a repressive life, not because the paperwork in the uh, government documents attacked us as much as the actual people who physically um, wrote the document, write it one way because the people who they're writing it for, they do treat them pretty much that way. But if you're not written into it, then you get treated as if the enemy, the enemy to that form of government, life, culture. Like when they say, my way of living, our way of life, the way they live, how we gonna live, you know. If we um, succumb to such and such and such, we giving up our lifestyle or whatever. That's what they be saying. That all goes along with um, certain propaganda that was left over from colonization or the empires. It's just that now it's become a genetic thing too. And the war just going on, but nevertheless, you can't keep basing yourself on what happened, what's going on. We just telling you what happened so you can understand why you're in the position you're in. Because everybody keeps telling you as a people that, uh, yes, I'm talking in third party, that's the only way you could be. Objective with it. That's why I'm talking in third party. It's not like I'm going crazy. But you're talking third party because I'm part of the people. Right? I'm the people too. But from a perspective of King Solomon looking at the people and all the different cultures, he could see that these are the Asiatics, these are the Europeans. Okay. Now, at, the only reason why you have to look at it as th that way is because that's what's showing itself to be the reality today. Yes, biologically, everybody's an earthling. All the fauna, and that's animate and inanimate, are all earthlings. That's a fact. But people don't see it that way right now. They're not that developed as a planet to see themselves like that. I wish they saw themselves that way, but they don't. And so, since they don't, you can't change what the planet does just because you don't do it. It's just you. You don't do it. So I'm saying, you can still do that now and still keep teaching. It's just that you woke up earlier than everybody else. Your genetic line woke up early. It's okay. It'll keep going. It'll keep traveling. Through osmosis, it's going to keep traveling. They can't stop it, especially now. It's like this internet backfired on everybody. It changed everything. You have to adapt. I'm telling you. Adapt to it. Don't forget how to do the old stuff. Don't forget how to do cursive writing, though. Your signature won't be worth a shit if you don't know how to do cursive writing. People will be able to hack your signature. Because you won't never develop a real signature. See, versus... Just cursive writing. You must learn your cursive writing. Don't let the system just learn to teach you keyboard. We learned that from the World Trade Center. What happened? World Trade Center act enacted itself. And when when the bombing and all that took place, that order that enacted it, World Trade Center, the World Trade Center bombing, ground zero. All of that from that point on. So as before. World Trade Center, after World Trade Center. All right, so now, once we say that, then we know 
after the World Trade Center, the internet changed totally. That was it. Just the World Trade Center just didn't change itself. The internet, everything changed. Social media changed. Because they didn't have Facebook good like it is now. I don't even think it was around then when the World Trade Center. YouTube was around. Um, when the, I, I got in, like, I don't know, YouTube, I don't even remember. But it wasn't, I think it was after the World Trade Center also. It wasn't before, because you're talking 98. 98s when the internet was in everybody's house. It was just AOL and email and then advertisements. And I don't really know what the fuck we was doing then. We was just bullshitting. Now it's not bullshitting. It's serious. You can get paid on there. You can do what you do. You keep in contact with your family. Easy. It's a lot of, you know, just people going to work and they keep in contact with their family. It makes it easy to do that. It also makes people get in contact with each other that would not have been able to find each other just because the country is so big. So imagine if you was in Africa, if you think America's big. You need to, or you need to go from Alaska to Chile to even act like you want to um, understand how big Africa is. You see what I'm saying? And it's bigger than that. It's bigger than this landmass from Alaska to Chile. So imagine how much diversity of the people in Africa it is and was, right? So imagine that on a, in your mind and then take that to another scale of 100 times that. That's what was going on in the world prior to... Mm, 20,000 at least, 20,000. So I know they don't, the numbers they use don't add up to the numbers we use, but this is what I'm saying. Why would you wonder if our numbers are right when you know he be telling lies on all kinds of stuff? Just regular people say, regular people who do start doing their own research, because when I say regular people, I mean you're like 17, you really ain't been in the earth that long, you don't really know, beside what your parents told you, you don't really know what's going on. Um, in time grade, there's only so much you could have studied in 17 years, because it's just impossible, because you're only going to get so much time out of definitely the first three, I'm going to just snatch those from you, boom. What studying were you doing besides ABC? So, and even when you, by the time you hit kindergarten, you might know something about current events, but it's not really interesting to a child. I mean, some children are exceptional and they go into all kind of stuff, but most children just want to play and be a child, and that's good. So, to get back to the point I'm saying, is actually, when you look at the whole picture, if the planet just said, okay, we're all earthlings, let's go for helping everybody, that would work. But that's not going to happen right now, so you have to have these remedies in place. That's why you want to trade, profession, um, you want to go into business for yourself, you want to be an entrepreneur, you don't just want to be in the entertainment industry. You could, remember, you could go food, clothing, or shelter. That noise got to be wisdom, you know, because singing, rapping, that's still all wisdom. you wisdom it. So you don't have to only do that. There's other numbers. You deal with equality. You know? So, like I was saying, the subject matter is based on success. Um... Because the reason why I'm bringing that up is because people who consider themselves successful, what are the standards that they use it to base their success on? That's more of a rhetorical question. Because we all know in today's society, nine out of ten times, we're using what is called the European standard for success. Even if they say, uh, 
it was a successful um, birth, right? They had a successful birth, childbirth. Uh, they'll be basing that success on the hospital. Hospital, doctor, chamber of commerce, with the birth certificate. Um, they're going to try to come around and give you a social security number. See, the 666 number. Illuminati's census. See, you had the Census Bureau, and then you had the Illuminati Census. Ah, <laughs> 10% Census. You see what I'm saying? So they got to keep the track of the people through the Chamber of Commerce and through the Social Security office. Uh, fell on a Delano Road ago, right? Um, FDR. And before him was Woodrow Wilson. Right, but 1933, uh, War Powers Act. Now, they used the War Powers Act once before, uh, during the Civil War with the Greenbacks and the Federal Reserve's bankers didn't like it then because it gives the uh, American colonies a different kind of independence versus the kind of independence they have when they're under the Federal Reserve notes. Um, that would just take you back into the lessons where you're dealing with gold and silver. Um, the success. People are basing success on the European standards. Even beauty, everything is still, his standard is still pretty much in play. So, Especially since you're talking about you successful. They're going to base that on how many Federal Reserve notes you have accumulated digitally or physically. Right? Um, pretty much they're going to base it on Federal Reserve notes. At the end of the day, Federal Reserve notes, fame is one thing. Because you can have fame and not have Federal Reserve notes. Or you could have Federal Reserve notes because of fame. Or you did something in entertainment and became famous and you also received Federal Reserve notes. But you could do some kind of crime towards society, or they think it's a crime, or people make it look like you did that crime, and you could become infamous from that. People will know you then. Too, right? Also, um, I think that should give me a good conclusion on success. You know, so if you're basing it on the European standards, that's what you're doing when you're getting away from when you're getting away from the European ideology of the world his historical view, his scientific view, his anthropological view. When you're getting away from that because you're going into knowledge yourself, it automatically rips you away from that ideology. Now your success and your ideologies are based on the lessons. Whatever lessons your nation manifests to you. Quote your lessons, you living it out. If you look at the degrees, then they're automatically going to tell you um, how to eat to live. You know, your food, clothing, and shelter will have a, uh, a structure to it. You just won't be randomly picking what you uh, adhere to. You'll be making moves based on an ideology. A manifestation of culture, a creed, rules and regulations, principles that have been set up before your physical composition was made manifest on this physical plane of existence. And you follow that. Now, sometimes you have the lessons that you don't really understand the esoteric or higher science of that particular degree. 
So an elder, someone who's been in the lessons longer than you, they could be an elder in the lessons and not be an elder. Because they just, when I met Igor, he was like that. He was an elder in the lessons because nobody had got it in the 70s in our group. He got it in the 70s. We all, um, 559. We all, uh, we all got it in the Bill Powers, in the Bill Ciphers. We got it in the Bill Ciphers, and he got it with uh, the other guards. That first wave, he got it in the late guard Ciphers. So once, you know, that went down, because like around guard born, God born, he's quoting 120, right? He got introduced to 120 like God equality, right? But he said he didn't really grab it like that. Around God born, he quoting his lessons, you know, he know and understand 120. So from God born to build an understanding, um, that's how much time he had with the greats, the nine born and the 14 born, he had time with them before he met me. Then once we uh, started building, they had no one showing and cruising, uh, a lot of mathematics. And then, you know, we just kept taking it right then. I got my students, you know, I'm just one of his students from that particular era, but Sometimes you are the enlightener, and sometimes you're the uh, teacher. Like, I can give you knowledge yourself, and you know now who the black man is God, but you don't really know and understand 120 lessons. And then you go to somebody else, and they're more proficient, and they enlighten you on 120. Come on. Yo, I'm out, man. Peace. No, 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 no. And that's not what I said. See, what happened was, I was reading uh, one of the 5% publication. And in the 5% publication, it was Shamgard. He said that when he received uh, lessons from Allah, that in the lessons, he didn't have refinement in his Mathematics. He said he didn't have refinement in his mathematics. So, and that's what I was saying. I was saying Shamgard said in his original set of mathematics there was no refinement in it. And then I said that when Firstborn Prince used to be building with Igar back in the days, like the late '80s and shit, um, mid '80s, um, he would. He said when the when the law gave him mathematics that he had to, he had power, uh, justice, and refinement in his, and his his lessons still look like that. And he said that um, there was a degree that he wanted me to do the knowledge to. So when I did the knowledge to the degree, in the degree it had power and it had justice in parentheses, and then it had or refinement. So, and I remember him saying something in effect, and um, I'm firstborn prince had said that when he got um, mathematics from the law, that his had power or refinement in that, and it had justice in it, and then he said the law said take justice out, and to take a law out of God's cipher divine, because that was a premature number. Old school nine born names, old school 14 born names was on it. So in that degree, it was saying that Allah said he didn't want us to all sound exactly the same. And he didn't want us militarized and uniform like the military or like the NOI. And if he wanted us to be like the NOI, he sent us to the temple. So in that, I, made a, I come up with the conclusion that uh, we're like fingerprints, you know. We all got our diverse ways of seeing it. But at the same time, you keep it the way you got it. Like they always said that when you get 120, you get the mathematics out by 12 Jews. Some got the 12 Jews, some don't. Um, 
some say f after 40 for freedom, some say power, I mean power of freedom, some say culture of freedom, some say just power. So, but at the end of the day, the black man is God. Who's the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man make on the cream planet and father civilization and God of the universe. So, as long as that's the real manifestation within itself, then everything else is, you know, an add-on to that. And, um, hi. So, um, that's how I see it, uh, that the, uh, the lessons are right and exact. And I remember Igar say, no, Shango is right and exact, meaning that's the way he received it, that's the way he's going to deliver it, you know. Um, same way, like, I got mine my way, I got them the way I got them, and then that's why I give them out, you know, I give them out the way I got it. I was saying something to the extent of the ruling class that's holding down the ideology of European supremacy in the form of American supremacy, in the form of um, the modern word they call today is the Sentence of the Europeans who are now Americans came over with the colonizer. They came with to colonize America. They successfully at colonizing America. And they have what is called Jim Crow. Prior to Jim Crow, they had the prison of war camps that they call now that there was slavery or whatever. You can dress it up any way you want. But those were prisoner of war camps. They was torturing you. It was like the Holocaust. You know, it was at that kind of a level. Only at a higher level than that. Like, say, take the Holocaust and what happened with Hitler. Right? And then you look at 1555 just to 1865, no comparison uh, as far as the amount of time. Because that was a short period of time comparing 379 years. They didn't get 379 years of Hitler and the Third Reich and the Nazism. They didn't get that. What are you saying? Did they got that? No, they did not. We got that. 379 years, isn't it? And that wasn't complete because the the Bill O'Reilly's and the and Trumps and all these people that you see that talk and act and notice how they're old. Because they was the ones left over from Jim Crow. And I'm out. Peace. Yes, sir. But anyway, let's go. I see days that matter, son. I see now this is the exercise. I'll give you the exercise. I'm gonna use the days mathematics to give you the exercise. Alright? So you say yeah. peace God, peace of God. I yeah, see days mathematics. I see days mathematics as wisdom builds and destroy. Now you might go all through the wisdom and kind of build and destroy or whatever. Or you can just go cut it short and go. I'm going to take it right to the old Jacques who says, we're going to lay to the freedom of the Lord's force for manufacturing the devil. You can take it right there. Wait, wait, wait. Am I going fast? 44. Uh, yeah. That's how you take it right there. Just like that. You be good. All right, I'm out. Peace.